Welcome to Data in Play. I'm Andrew from Audition Group, and this is the mini-series that gives you an insight into how data is harnessed by some of the world's biggest sports teams and brands. Joining me today is Anne-Marie Rowe, who is a Senior Manager of Business Analytics at the Oakland A's. Anne-Marie, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. Very excited to be here. You're more than welcome. And so just for the people at home, this episode is going to focus on data analytics in the context of business analytics and consumer and demographics and behavior and that type of thing. So it's going to be a really interesting episode. So really pleased that you're here to join us. But before we get kind of get this whole thing kicked off and started, let's set the scene first. So what does the senior manager for business analytics for the Open Days do? Um, great question. Uh, so primary responsibility at the Oakland Athletics is to use our data warehouse and analytics resources to properly make decisions. Um, so that involves assisting and managing our CRM system, um, building out our data visualiz vis visualization tools, and then leading our fan engagement program. So getting feedback from our fans on their experience at the ballpark and then figuring out how to make that experience better for them moving forward. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. And obviously huge news as well recently for the sports fans that are listening to this particular episode about you guys moving stadium soon. Yes, um, we're very excited. Shovel hasn't fully um, been put in the ground yet, but we're getting much closer to hopefully um, securing our new venue space uh, in Las Vegas. Wow, fantastic. It's amazing stuff. And like I said at the start, you know, we're going to really focus on the business analytics side of things and and really delve a bit more into that. So I think it's a good place to start in terms of, you know, how do you tend to identify and target specific demographic groups using those business analytics and, and really kind of attract new ticket buyers to a baseball team? Yeah, um, so we within our data warehouse have access to uh, demo data for most everyone that's in our registered user database. And so what we do through um, our analytics tools is we do a lot of analysis on who our previous ticket buyers have been, um, and then we match that with our demographic data, and we kind of figure out what those different pockets of, of folks are. And then um, we, from there, figure out how we reach um, new fans that fit into the demographics of what our previous buyers have looked like. And I think from there, as we <clears throat> figure out more of who our previous and current buyers are, we're then able to figure out how do we be more strategic and smart through the way that we market, through the emails that we send, through the events that we host, through the advertising that we have in the city um, and in in a way to, you know, around the United States. And so for us, um, having an understanding of who our buyers are and what they're interested in helps us to be much more strategic in the ways that we um, make decisions regarding how we uh, continue to do business and increase business um here in oakland yeah that sounds, sounds great and i imagine it probably the demographics probably change from i don't know season to season and, and that type of thing so the data is constantly kind of fresh and and in terms of who you're trying to target but also aside from that as well i imagine it changes from generation to generation as well right in terms of the type of demographics you guys are targeting yeah absolutely and i think a lot of my um experience has been in sports i was with the red sox for about eight years before coming out to the a's and um a lot of this work really started at the red sox um in some capacity in that you know most season ticket holders or baseball fans that go to games are around an average age of 54 years old and so um you know they're coming to games now but in order to continue to make sure that baseball continues and that fans keep coming to games, we have to figure out how to reach that younger demographic and that younger fan. And um, so a lot of my work in analytics started there at the Red Sox and, you know, kind of figuring out how do we identify and then what do we do to make sure that a young fan um, is learning about the game of baseball from, from an early age. And so um, that has obviously transpired out here. The fans out here are are definitely different um, than than Boston, and there aren't nearly as many, you know, Oakland A's fans that are coming to games here as there are in Boston. So it definitely provides a bit of a different challenge. Um, and I think too, for me specifically, one of my roles is to kind of think a little bit more about our product strategy. So the product that we're offering to our fans um, in Boston and at the Red Sox, you know, there are a lot of season ticket holders, and that was a big product that we offered. And here um, they're not, especially with the team that's been in the Bay, hasn't been performing great on the field, and then it's going to be leaving, you're not going to be able to offer the same type of products that you can offer in Boston. And so 
Um, for me here, it's been a really exciting opportunity to be able to test out some different products. We're not necessarily nearly as focused on season tickets here, but we're focused on some of those smaller ticket packages of, oh, maybe we could get, you know, a fan to not come to all 81 games in a premium space or experience, but maybe we could get them to come to five. Um, and so I think an aspect of the work here that's really exciting is fun and is not only, you know, using data to figure out who our current buyers are, um, and, you know, trying to get them to come to more games, figuring out how to reach some of the younger fans, but also being more strategic and creative in the product that we're offering to our fans. And um, what's also neat to think about, too, is, you know, here in Oakland, the product that's going to be offered is also going to be completely different than what we're going to offer in Las Vegas. Um, it's going to be a completely different experience at a ballpark that's on the strip in Las Vegas uh, than it is going to be at a, at a ballpark here in Oakland. So it's even more to think about um, in terms of product strategy and ideas. And so to be able to test a lot of that out here um, before before we move is um, an interesting opportunity. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. I think it's a, I think it, I think two things from that. And the first one is that you know you provide that kind of that bespoke analytics, I guess, in terms of data that you have because like like you said, you know compared to like a Red Sox, you are a smaller team, a small club, right? But it's super interesting in the way that you've got to do things a little bit differently to be able to kind of do what you do, right? Um, and I think the second point of that in terms of having to change that ever so slightly to be able to cater to a different audience in a different, in different part of, of, of your country, right? So I think that's going to be super interesting to kind of keep an eye on over the next sort of few years or so when everything kind of pans out and moves forward. And, you know, you've touched upon it there in terms of, some of the different products, et cetera. But what tools and technologies would you kind of use to gather and analyze and interpret the data? Yeah, um, so <clears throat> tools, uh, we have a lot of tools which help make our job uh, easier. I think <clears throat> one of the biggest things with data analytics is, you know, you can analyze data all day, um, but one of the most important pieces is being able to communicate that data. Um, because if our marketing team doesn't understand um, the data that we're analyzing and, you know, the information that we're collecting, it, it does no good. And so, um, you know, in terms of data analysis, I mean, we're using Google BigQuery, SQL Server, um, and then our CRM system is Salesforce. Most people are probably familiar with Salesforce. Mm -hmm. um, we use Core on top of Salesforce, which um, assists with our partnerships team, um, helps them kind of keep track of all of their partnership assets. Um, and then the biggest one that I spend a lot of time in um, with myself and my analysts is Tableau. Um, so mm. that's our data reporting. Um, so we build out all kinds of different reports um, based on and dashboards based on fan feedback that we get from the games. Um, and then we share those reports, you know, with all of our different departments. So our marketing department, our operations department, our sales department. So they have a quick and easy way to see how fans are experiencing the game, but then they also have, you know, insight into how their sales campaigns are running and performing, what's working, what's not, immediate feedback on, you know, a fan experience um, at the ballpark. If it's poor, if it's great, um, they can have access to it. We also use R and Python, and then um, <clears throat> we have a surveying tool, Qualtrics, um, which we use. So, those are kind of our big um, tools and what we, I guess, would call, you know, our tech stack. But um, all of those resource, resources are incredibly important. Um, I think, again, just going back to the being able to communicate, um, you know, we do a, a lot of work writing code in uh, Google BigQuery, but uh, if we can't communicate out what we're finding, um, there's, you know, it's, it's not helpful. So making sure that you have, you know, a good BI tool is pretty crucial and, and for us that one is Tableau. Yeah, I think that, you know, you hit it on the head before in terms of kind of communicating with different teams within the, within the within the whole club, right? So I think that certainly prior to kind of speaking with speaking with you and doing more research into all this, I didn't really know about how much work goes in behind the scenes in terms of, you know, you speaking with the sales, with marketing, with merchandising and all those kind of different, different kind of departments within the team. Um, I think it's fascinating in terms of how much work actually goes in behind the scenes and how many people are there and what you have to do to provide insights, which, and, you know, those particular insights are so crucial, aren't they, to kind of the future of the club. So, you know, you pay, you play such a, a vital role in all. Yeah. And that's one thing I think about business analytics that I love is 
you get to touch every aspect and area of the business and you get to work with every team. And for me, um, I'm very much a type A person who appreciates efficiency. And so <laughs> the more that I can help other teams be efficient and make smarter decisions, um, the better. And it also, um, I, I enjoy helping too. So it, it's, I feel like a really great role um, for me and why, you know, I kind of wanted to jump back into sports is I really like being and feeling part of a team, but being able to figure out how to help make um, better business decisions is uh, a really fun thing to do each day. Yeah, no, I agree. I think it, is. it sounds like I said, it sounds fascinating from somebody who's obviously on the outside of it, looking in at the sort of stuff that you guys do. It just sounds amazing. I imagine no two days the same in terms of kind of That's the right. insights <laughs> that you could that you can get from week to week and how that kind of pans out in the in, the, in terms of the wider picture. Um, but yeah, it sounds brilliant. And, and what was interesting for me really is finding out from you, you know, how do you use, you know, business analytics to understand the behaviors and the preferences of, of potential ticket buyers? And you mentioned that earlier on in the episode where you talked about, you know, different kind of ticket models and different ways of doing things and different products. So, yeah, how would you kind of use the business analytics in that way? Yeah, so I think um, definitely we, you know, we take a look at demo data and um, different products that are selling well. Another big, um, you know, kind of project that we've been working on ourselves, but then also with the league is the customer journey. So figuring out how does a customer figure out or buy their ticket to the game, um, where are they coming from, and then what happens after the game. And so that takes a lot of analysis of kind of sending out an email, figuring out, or, you know, just going back to, okay, someone purchased a ticket. Okay, how did they purchase a ticket? Did they get an email? Did they see it on our website? Did they see it from um, a social post? And so we have a good amount of um, data that we can look at based off of email and website traffic and all that. Um, another thing that we also send out is a survey and we ask them, you know, how did you hear about the game? Um, why did you want to come? And so between the combination of, you know, looking at our click through data, then also looking at our survey data, we're able to get kind of good insight into how our fans are figuring out about the A's and why they decided to come to the game. And then what we've also been doing is following up with them and trying to get them to come to at least one more game. And so I think the more that we can understand who our fans are, how they're hearing about us, why they're choosing to come, it allows us to then be a little bit more strategic in terms of the products that we are offering and the ways that we're putting, you know, where we're putting our marketing dollars um, and efforts. And, and I think for here, you know, it's completely different than um, at the Red Sox for, you know, at the A's it's um, tickets are really cheap. And so it's very accessible for a family on a Saturday to just happen to decide that they want to come to the A's game. And there's plenty of parking um, and we have all kinds of different, you know, sometimes food offers on the weekends um, or, you know, we have upcoming um, this summer, uh, bark in the park, which, you know, you can bring your dog and, um, on Sundays, kids will get into the games for free. And so there's all kinds of kind of more accessible ways to access the ballpark here, um, because it's much larger, um, mm -hmm. and we have a lot more capacity, but I think, um, you know, figuring out how all of these fans on the weekends are, are coming, um, and, and who they are has helped us kind of create and draft some of those ideas for Bark in the Park or Kids Come to Games for Free, um, which has been fun and, um, you know, exciting to be a part of. But I think for me too, you know, the more that we can have a better understanding of where we should be marketing, what we should be posting on social, um, what we should be advertising um, around the city is, um, is neat. Yeah, I think so. And over in, in the UK, I imagine it's probably similar as well over in the US, but over in the UK, especially when we're talking about football or obviously soccer in your case, but when we talk about that kind of thing, you know, the people who generally go to the game and support the teams are from the local area. So about, apart from me, so I support Arsenal, but I'm from Manchester and they're obviously in London. So that's slightly different. But for the A's, for example, do you find that from the insights and the analysts that, that you kind of work with, do you find that a lot of people, a lot of fans are from the surrounding area or what's the usual kind of bunch of people that attend games? Yeah, um, most all of them are from the surrounding area. Um, so yeah, San Francisco Bay area. 
Uh, it's been neat. We, and, and, and this has actually been helpful for me. Um, I recently started a business strategy and analytics group for all of the Bay Area sports teams. Oh, wow. Um, and so we had an outing uh, last week, everyone, uh, or, or most, we had representatives from the Warriors, the Giants, the 49ers, the A's, and then the Sharks um, hockey. Yeah. And um, and so the goal is to, you know, get together around three times a year. We're all kind of trying to market to the same group of people. Uh, and but yeah, there's a little bit less competition. I mean, there is obviously competition with the Giants, but I think, you know, it's different sports and, um, and we have, you know, way more games, but I think I'm very excited about having this group specifically because, you know, the fans out here are just a lot different than on the East coast. And I'm still trying to, you know, f- figure out <laughs> how to, you know, <laughs> be strategic and market to fans here. And, and while they are still, yeah, mostly from around the Bay area, um, the more, you know, I can lean on other teams and, you know, and different folks here for ideas, um, the better. And, and one thing that we found too is, um, you know, in spring training, we, we play down in Arizona and Mesa, Arizona, and, you know, our fans are mostly all here in California or in the Bay and, and they don't travel down to Arizona. And so that's also kind of another project too, of, all right, who are we targeting, you know, there, because our fans here, since the weather is pretty nice, Um, they're not traveling to Arizona in the spring because they don't need to. Whereas in Boston, you know, it's so cold. Fans are trying to get down as quickly as possible to Florida. And so um, just a different kind of, you know, problem here and not necessarily problem, but challenge. And um, but further goes to your point of, yes, most of our um, fans here are within at least 50 to 100 miles um, of the ballpark. Yeah, that sounds great. And it's it's good as it's really kind of refreshing to hear as well about the amount of collaboration as well that kind of goes on and um between obviously you guys and other sports teams and not just kind of baseball teams as well, but you mentioned there about different sports and that type of thing. So it must be really cool to be able to lean on people from other other sports and other other teams to really like collaborate and get these ideas going. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's one thing about, um, you know, baseball and gen- well, baseball and sports in general um, that I really love with Major League Baseball specifically, we have a revenue share. So a portion of funds every year um, goes to Major League Baseball and then they disperse it among the teams. And um, I think that allows collaboration, but also, you know, we're not really competing for the same fan. You know, a Red Sox fan is never going to be a Yankee fan and Mm -hmm. an A's fan is never going to be a Giants fan. And so what's neat about that is that it really allows us to collaborate and to share ideas. And for me, I grew up an athlete. I always loved being part of teams and um, I enjoyed group projects. And so (laughs) to be in an industry where we're all kind of sharing best practices and I've probably at least once a week have a conversation with someone from another major league baseball team or another professional team in general, just asking, you know, how are you managing, you know, your data warehouse? What are you doing in CRM? We've recently launched a couple of new sales campaigns, asking other teams if those have been successful. And so um, when I was even thinking about coming back into sports, um, one of the, one of my mentors, you know, had said to me, you know, one thing I've just found is that People, and, and this isn't true of necessarily everyone, and but you know, <laughs> most people that work in sports are really kind and willing to help. And I have very much found that. You know, I I jumped out of sports for a little bit, and um, it wasn't that people are unkind, but sports to me does feel like there's very much this team collaboration and willingness to help each other, um, which is really exciting and and fun to be a part of. Um, to feel as if you know everyone's kind of rooting and hoping um, that, you know, we can provide a really fun experience for a fan. Yeah, I think that collaboration doesn't stop in terms of kind of with with external kind of teams and clubs, it's all internal as well, right? So how do you collaborate with the departments in terms of, you know, sales or, or customer service example to use those analytics that you've got to be able to attract new buyers and retain existing customers, for example? Yeah. Um, so the way that uh, we collaborate best is communication. Um, so I think this has been a big kind of driver for myself early on from my um, start in 
you know, business analytics is that, you know, if you can't communicate the data and you can't work with other people, your department is not going to be successful. Yeah. And so we heavily, you know, rely on some of our BI tools to communicate, but I think it's more, you know, being friendly and looking for opportunities to help another team be more efficient. Um, nothing is more uh, exciting. Well, for me, like, I think nothing is more exciting than having our marketing team know that the work that they're doing is making a difference or providing, you know, further sales. So the more that we can share and provide guidance and direction as to what has been successful and what needs to be improved, the better. And so obviously, you know, weekly emails, but then it's been a lot of building out our Tableau dashboards and giving departments access to actions that they're taking and allowing them to see what the results are. And we don't necessarily always the, we, we, I would say that we provide the data and the analytics and the insights, and then it's kind of in a way up to those teams to at the end, make their own decisions. But the more that we can provide data and ideas on how to be efficient, the better. Um, and so that's what's also neat too. And that like, I'm not a micromanager. I don't like, I like to have control, but I don't want others to feel like we're controlling. And so, and yeah. that's a little bit of a tricky piece too okay, we're going to share with you the insights and the data so that you have access to it. It's still a little bit up to you to make the right decision, but how can we help you be more be more efficient? So um, yeah, it's mainly through just collaboration um, and then through meetings. And I think one thing that's nice too is, um, you know, we go, we're hybrid. So we go into the office two to three times a week. Um, we're supposed to go in at least two. Um, I typically go in a, a little bit more because I'm an extroverted yeah. Person. Um, but I think just being able to, you know, walk by someone's desk if you have a question or um, provide, you know, a piece of information that might be helpful um, is better. But yeah, just through meetings, through um, tools um, that we have, Tableau and and all, and um, yeah, and then and then through through email and. Um, but yeah, like I said, communication I think is really key, especially when it comes to business analytics. Um, yeah. and the more that you can, you know, let other team members know that you have their back and are there to help the better. Yeah. It seems to be a really common theme, not just kind of in sports and stuff, but in the data analytics industry as a whole, in terms of communication is one of the biggest kind of things that, that can potentially let amazing things down and amazing projects down because, you know, people don't or people can't for a, for a better word, maybe communicate their strategy or their vision or you know, simple things that really matter in the grand scheme of things, and they can't communicate that in a really efficient and a really clear way for people to kind of understand. So I'm totally kind of on board with what you're saying there. I think that a lot of people might think it's quite straightforward and it's quite a an easy thing to kind of do. But in reality, a lot of places find it difficult to do. But it's it's really great to hear that, you know, you have that collaboration, you have those regular kind of catch ups and meetings, and you're always kind of talking to each other about things. And and ultimately, that proves, you know, the proofs in the pudding, I guess, in terms of why you're so successful at what you do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, listen, Amory, it's been fantastic to have you on the uh, on the episode. And lastly, before I let you go, what is the the biggest takeaway that you would like the audience to take with them today? Um. Yeah, I guess I would just say, you know, data is powerful. Um, make sure that you're. Uh, building relationships and communicating effectively and using some of the tools that you have. Um, I would also just say another mentor of mine um, likes to say that, you know, we get to work in the toy department of life. And so um, it's been super exciting and fun for me to work um, in that field, but to also help other people be more efficient. So use data, um, allow it to, you know, build connections and provide you with opportunities to help other people. I think at the end of the day, to be able to put on a really fun experience for a fan, but also to help other people make smarter decisions is a really exciting um, career field uh, to be in. Yeah, I agree. Anne Marie, thank you so much for, for taking part. You've been amazing. So thank you so much for appearing today. Thanks for having me.